Hello everyone, my name is Amber and welcome to a Lovely Yarn Podcast. Today is Monday, August 28th and I am so glad that you are joining me today. Thank you. Um, it has been two weeks since I filmed last because last week I was just really, really busy. Uh, it is the end of summer. <laughs> so that means that my tomatoes are producing like crazy. I have a lot of peppers that need preserving and canned and there's just all kinds of wonderful excitement happening in the garden. And so last week I just really felt the need to just not worry about filming and really just dig into the chores that I needed to complete and the tasks that needed done in my garden. Now, I still have all those things happening this week as well. It's just the nature of having a garden this time of year. You know, you go through a lot of work in all your planting stages and then you're actually planting your seeds in the late spring, well, mid to late spring here in Pennsylvania, which is where I live. And then you kind of have a lull throughout the summer while you're just kind of waiting in anticipation for your plants to start producing. I mean, yes, granted, I am definitely out there weeding and all of that, but a lot, most of my beds are very well established, so there aren't a lot of weeds that need taken care of. And then we get to about mid-August, and that's when the production really starts and when I need to stay on top of things so that things do not go to waste. So I almost did not film again this week because of that. And then I thought, no, I'm just going to get on here, do something. Uh, cause I do have a lot to show. I have three finished objects today, which is kind of crazy. Um, so even though it's been very busy in the garden, I have been definitely using my knitting as my relaxing. <laughs> it's, it's like my, when I, when I have downtime, when I have time, mostly first thing in the morning before I get started, and then um, at the end of each day, I love to listen to an audiobook and knit, and that is what I normally do. Actually, morning time, I watch a knitting podcast and knit, and then in the evening, I, I'm not, I don't want all of the, like, ideas and stuff being thrown at me in the evening, so I typically am not an evening podcast viewer. Um, I like that first thing in the morning when I'm feeling more energized. Nighttime, I want to wind down, so I'll play an audiobook and I will knit. So even though I've been really busy in the garden, I have had time because I make time. I'm very intentional about making sure I have knitting time almost every day. It's rare that I do not knit just because it is so much part of my routine and the rhythm of my day. So it just brings me a lot of joy. It helps to calm me and relax me and I can uh, so I've greatly improved, but I have, I am wired more towards being, I don't want to say high strung, that's not the right word, but more of an anxious person. I've really grown a lot. God has helped me a lot in that journey over the last 15 years. Um, but I, knitting really does help to calm my spirit. So it is important for me to include it in my daily routine along with many other things that help keep things under control as well. But this is a knitting podcast. Sometimes I do talk about some crochet. I'm also a spinner. As you can see, I have my Ashford Traveler spinning wheel right here beside me. And uh, this, poor, this poor wheel has been neglected. Uh, I think the last time I, I actually spun on it was 2019, which is really sad to me. Uh, I need to give it a good dusting. I I feel like I, I need to tighten up the drive band. Probably need to do a little bit of oiling and um, condition the wood. I just haven't felt overly inspired to spin for some reason, uh, which I, I think maybe it just has to do with my season of life and just the busyness. And so when I do have time to create, I find my most joy in knitting or sometimes crocheting, but mostly knitting. So that is probably why I have not spun for such a long time. Anyway, um, as I said, I have three finished objects for you guys. One I am, well, I'm, I'm excited about all of them. And also this has been a time of 
clearing some needles and getting some FOs, focusing on some FOs that I have neglected for a while. So I'm really excited to share that about you or share that with you. And I just realized I didn't write one of my big projects down in my notes for today, which is, I have no idea why, because I'm like, it's something I picked up last week that I have not knit on since spring and it's a big one and it's nearing the end. So I'm going to talk about that here in a little bit. First, I want to share what I'm wearing. This is probably, no, this is hands down my most favorite and most worn summer knit I have ever made. And this is the Anchor Summer Shirt by Petite Knit. And um, it is, I mean, I've talked about this not too long ago because I just knit this earlier in the summer or maybe in the spring, I can't remember now, but I love this. And I think the reason I love it so much is because it's very just plain, although it does have some texture here, which I really like, but also the color. So this is Drops Bell in the color 21, which I think is called mint cream, but it's not green at all. It's a very natural, neutral, off-white color. It goes with everything. And I really like, I know if you guys have watched me for a while, you know I've knit quite a few garments in the, the Drops Bell yarn. It's a cotton. Is it just cotton? It might have linen in it too. No, I can't remember. But um, I just, I love this. It, it is so nice. It's so nice. Um, so yeah, I'm just wearing it with a pair of my like cropped pants. And anyway, okay. So let's talk about what I'm really excited about. Well, one of the things I'm really excited about. So I finished my Felix cardigan and it's already been blocked. And I am going to insert I'm going to insert some footage here on the side so you can see as I talk about it. You can see what it looks like when I have it on. I really like that when, when podcasters do that because it's one thing to see a garment when you're holding it and it's another thing to see it on an actual body. I also really appreciate Ravelry users who post pictures of their finished garment on rather than just lying on the table or bed or or even, you know, I just, I don't know. It just helps me to see what it's going to look like on a real human body. Um, so this is it. I should maybe just slip it on. But first, well, let me just talk a little bit about it. Let me get back to my notes. So I knit this using yarn from that I purchased from Hobby Lobby, which is the Rustic Romance uh, base from Yarn Bee. And um, it's in the oaky wheat color. I knit the smallest size, and I was my measurements came out for the second size, but um, I my, like my full bust measurements. And I talked about this in my last podcast. But some of you had recommended that since I have a pretty consistent problem with my garments that I knit, like my sweaters that I knit, being too big you had suggested that I take my upper bust measurement, which is like right under the armpits. So I did that. And this is the first sweater that I've done that with and it turned out perfect. I, I really could not be any happier with the fit of this. It's, it's lovely. So the only thing I haven't done yet is placed buttons because I don't have buttons that I want to use on this. I actually, so I have my buttonholes in. I put buttonholes and I actually had gone around with, I had fiddled with the idea of not even making buttonholes and just having it like this because honestly most cardigans that I have that I've bought from the store, they don't even have buttons. I don't wear them buttoned. I just wear them loose. But because this is more of a crew neck type sweater, I thought that I would like to have the option of buttoning it up um, if I so desired. So. I love this detail on the raglan increase. It's the same raglan in the lace that she, it's like just really simple. I think it's yarn overs. It's just really simple um, lace work on the raglan. And she ha includes this in her Felix pullover as well as the cardigan version. And I just think that I like simple knits, but I also like little special things. 
So I think what I'm going to do as far as buttons is um, there is an online store, which I've talked about before, that I've ordered from Hall & Hoof Farm. And I've ordered buttons off of them before. Now, where did I put them? So I want to show you. The, the buttons that I have, the buttons that I have are not going to work for this sweater. But they're so darn cute. And I, so I just want to show them to you to give you an idea. Okay, so they are handmade clay buttons. And these are the ones that I have previously ordered. They also make wooden buttons, but I really think that um, I want to have clay buttons on this one. And they're very light, so I'm not worried about them being too heavy for this. This is a, this is an acrylic yarn. It's acrylic and... What is the other... Oh, why didn't I not write that down? I talked about it before. Oh, wait, I have... I have an extra skein. I only used three skeins of yarn plus just the tiniest amount off of this. So this is, uh, now I can't even find it on here. Oh, hemp, 15% hemp, 85% acrylic. So, and it is also, it's super wash, which is also another reason I thought that the si smallest size was a good idea. Um, but anyway, Holland Hoof Farm has so many cute ceramic button buttons, and I just want to get simple, plain, round buttons. These are, you know, really cute, and I'm going to eventually use these for something. I don't know what yet, but I just want to get plain, and I think they have some light teal-looking buttons on there. Um, maybe if I think about it when I'm editing this, I'll add some pictures of the, some buttons that I'm interested in getting potentially for this sweater, but I'm going to need a total of six buttons, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, six buttons. So I think that a teal, like a light teal would be really pretty. I like yellow and teal together and um, just, I don't know. I love pottery, handmade clay items. And I love to support businesses like this. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I do have a collection of buttons in my craft supplies, but most of them are, so I have some plain wooden buttons that I had tried with this and they just, I didn't, I did not like them. And then I had some leather, uh, buttons that have like the post on the back rather than the holes that you stitch through, but I only had three of those. Those probably would have been worked out, but I just feel like this cheerful, yellow, <laughs> beautiful, happy, makes me so happy cardigan needs, oh, maybe even like, this is like kind of the color I'm talking about. Yeah, I forgot that these earrings, this is like a teal, greenish, blue, so something like this. I mean, wouldn't that be so happy and cheerful? I also have thought about doing some embroidery somewhere on this. I don't know that I'm going to do that yet. I've never embroidered, okay, I've embroidered, I've never embroidered my knitting, but I've always thought that looks so beautiful. So I don't know if maybe it needs a little bit of some embroidery. I don't know. This might be one of those things that I just keep adding special little touches to um, as I feel inspired to do so. But it definitely needs buttons. Might get some pretty floral embroidery at some point down the line. We shall see what happens with this, but I'm really excited to have it done. And it, because it's made out of the yarn bee, it's, um, and it's, it's not like overly hot. I'm in this season of my life right now <laughs> where I'm experiencing out of nowhere, you know what I'm talking about. You just get so hot. It's like sweating. It feels like you have a furnace inside of you. Sometimes my glasses even fog up. I mean, it's just like ridiculous. And I just am running more hot, I, which is so unusual for me because usually and historically, I've always been more of a cold person. <laughs> but um, yeah, for the last couple of years and it comes in waves and I'm this summer I've been in this and especially for the last month I've just been so hot in fact um, Ian my, one of my children he well he's like 20 now but he's still my child you know he comes 
he came out of his room last week and he's like, mom, why is it so cold in here? I'm shivering. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. Is it cold? Like I'm not even realizing it. So I'm having a little bit of a hard time wearing really warm wooly things right now, which is kind of sad, but I am just assuming this is a temporary thing, although it may be a longer temporary thing, but I'm just going to go with it. I feel like this is a nice, it is actually quite light. So, um, I think having said all that, I think I'm going to get a lot of wear out of this sweater. Okay. Now let's move on. I think that's all that I wanted to, Oh no. One more thing I want to say about this because I had someone comment that, um, so someone, one of you viewers is also knitting this and you had said when you pick up the stitches to do the neckline, that you are going to pick up less stitches. And I would say that that's an excellent idea because when I finished my neckline, it was wider than what I wanted. So what I ended up doing, I had a super long tail uh, from my yarn. Like I left a really long, long tail when I, when I like bound off. And what I ended up doing was I thread it through the entire neckline and then I kind of cinched it a bit. So like it moves along that thread of yarn, but it did help to just pull everything in. So it's a little bit tighter and you know, there's more structure to that neckline. And I guess I should say that this is knit in the top down from top down and you're going back and forth, of course. And then, um, you knit your bottom hem and then you go back and you pick up stitches and you knit your button bands on each side. And then the final thing you do is pick up stitches for the, the neckline or the collar. And then you do that. So just for anyone who, I know that there are some of you who are thinking about knitting this and I will be making more. I'm already thinking about some of the yarn that I have that I think would be a good option for this, for this pattern. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about are my finished fletching socks. And this is a pattern by Jessica McDonald. And, um, I knit these using Tuku wool, their sport weight, which it's finished wool. It's 80% finished wool and 20% nylon. And okay. So this bottom panel, <laughs> this bottom color work section, I totally messed it up. And I didn't realize it until I was like way down here somewhere. And I looked and I thought, what the heck did I do? It's these should be point. This bottom row of color work should be pointing this way. I'll show you over here what it should look like. See, it's like arrows. Yeah. Mine. I don't know what I did. I read, I must've read one chart and then my eyes skipped to the second, to like the second chart and the second half of the chart. But because it's such a subtle color sh shift, I don't care. <laughs> I was just like, I'm not ripping out all of this to go back and correct that. These are going to be socks that I wear at home because they did turn out big. I talked about this last episode. They turned out a lot bigger than I thought they were going to. Um, I used sport weight yarn, but I uh, it, the pattern calls for Barrett. Barrett Woolco, the Woolens yarn. And I feel like it's very similar in its gauge, but they just turned out a lot bigger than I thought. And I did knit the adult small. It comes in six different sizes, baby, toddler, child, and then adult small, medium, and large. And when I talked to you guys last, I did say that I wanted to knit these again using Peyton's Croy, which is also, it's Peyton's Croy is marked as a fingering weight. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Category one, super fine, but I think it knits up more like a sport weight. I definitely think that I've used Peyton's Croy for a lot of socks. I love it cause it's so adorable, but it's, it knits up like a sport weight yarn. I would not call it a fingering weight. So Lily and I were out, my daughter Lily and I were out this past week. So I stopped at Joanne fabrics and I got these two yarns, Peyton's Croy, 
in the, this is the flax colorway and this is the muslin colorway. And this is exactly what I was imagining because I'm going to re-knit these socks using this. Now I was able to knit these, this pair and I have this much yarn left and these were, oh, sorry. <laughs> these had 160 meters per, per skein when I started. So um, I was able to get this pair. Look how much I have left over. I feel like I could do this again and just reverse the color work and still have enough. I know I could. Okay. I mean, I would have just enough, I think, but this has 166 yards. So the meterage is going to be 152 meters on this. So I only bought one skein of each color. And that'll be plenty because I'm going to knit it the same way that I knit these. I'm going to make the contrast color the white and the main color will be this flax color, which I really, really love. It's a nice brown, real neutral brown. And I will do the, just like this, the cuff, the toe, or the <laughs> heel and the toe in this off white color and everything else will be in this. So I'm going to start those actually probably today or tomorrow. And I'm hoping that, and I'm pretty sure that, um, these will be socks that I'll be able to wear in my shoes or at least in my boots where these are going to be more of like a house sock, just like a slipper sock. That's my plan. That is my hope. So this is a future project that I'm just going to throw in here in the finished finished projects segment because why not? Okay. Last finished object is another pair of socks and they are my September wood socks. And this pattern is by, um, Olivia of this handmade life. And aren't these gorgeous socks? I already blocked them. So this, these are like little leaves that you just use some simple lace work to uh, accomplish that motif and then it's ribbing down the foot and then I did the uh, Kitchener stitched my toe. I don't remember if this is the heel that she calls for in the pattern because I often just do a slip stitch heel even if the pattern doesn't like call even if it calls for a different one that's just my go-to heel. So I don't know that it's the one that she actually told you told you to use in the pattern but it's what I did and I started these last fall right when Olivia released them like the day she released them within within hours of her releasing I purchased this pattern and I had completed I got the first one done really quickly and then I started the second one and I got to about maybe here somewhere in here and I set it aside and I just came back to it last week because I was like, I want to clear off some of my needles. I want to finish some whips that I've had just setting there for a while. So yeah, I did this rather relatively quickly. This is, I just dedicated my knitting time to finishing these socks and I finished them on, I think Friday, Thursday or Friday. And these are going to go to my daughter, Lily, because she loves them a lot. And she is planning on wearing them with some um, ankle boots looking real cute and fallish in them. This is knit with knit picks, stroll tweed in the persimmon heather color, which I absolutely love. And honestly, this pair of socks used almost just one ball of this yarn. And this is just, this is a, is this 50 grams? It is. It's a 231 yard skein of yarn. I did have to dig into this one a little bit, but not much, but I would not have had enough to finish these if I had not had this second skein. But if you don't, if you only have one of these, you could do contrast colors for the, like the cuffs and the uh, toes and you should have enough. But yeah, just, I think these will make perfect fall socks. And I don't really have anything else to say about them other than I really love Olivia's sock patterns. I've knit multiple sock patterns of hers and yeah, I have no complaints. I think she's a really great sock designer. So I would say that probably any of her sock patterns would be wonderful to knit. Now we're going to talk about whips and I only have one. 
I only have one whip that I'm actively working on. And it is a pair of socks called the Butt First Coffee Socks by Knit On Designs. And let me show you, I have the first one completely done except to, to close up the toe, which the only reason I did not close the toe up is because I didn't have my darning needle with me when I finished these and then I just haven't gotten back to it. But um, I like to Kitchener stitch. I have it, like I know, I just know how to do it now. When I first started doing it years ago, I had to always look up the instructions for it, but now it's just in my head how to do it. It's kind of like the same with um, uh, the sewn tubular bind off. Like I just, I don't use, I'd never used that enough until recently. And now I just kind of have it, the whole rhythm of it in my head. But these are really fun. This is my second pattern of dabs that I've knit. And this is part, you can get this pattern individually or you could bar, buy the trio, which is only $8.50 US dollars and you get three pairs of shorty socks, which I think is an amazing deal. But um, I am just using some leftover yarn. I'm actually, this yarn is really, I'm stretching it out as I've said, and I'm not gonna get into this a lot because I've been talking about this yarn for a while, but this is Flower Hill Fleeces, Farm Fresh Eggs. And this is a color from Cozy Posy Yarn Co. that I don't know because I no longer have the label, but this is the third pair of socks I'm getting out of this yarn, which is pretty amazing. The first pair was just a regular long pair of socks that I knit for my daughter. And then um, I knit a pair of shorties, the uh, morning coffee socks, which I just talked about recently. And then these are the third pair, which, um, yeah, fun patterns. She does, she has really fun patterns. I love the little bit of texture that you get. And I will like wet these socks because of the way that this is done, this pattern is made, it does kind of scrunch in there. But after, after blocking, it will not. Not that I'd have to, because when I put it on my foot, it stretches out just fine. But um, I probably will block it, because I don't know if I'll keep these socks for myself or I'll give them as a gift. But I just did a couple rounds of the contrast on top, which is what she did. And then I'm just doing the contrast toe. Super fun, really cute. I have the second one that I started that I um, just have the heel flap almost done and then I'll start the gusset. So yeah, that's that. The next whip is my long neglected wick whip. I guess it isn't really long neglected. I have other whips that I've neglected way longer than this one, but this is my Ingrid sweater. And this is a pattern by Petite Knit. I started this last winter and I worked on it up through May beginning of May, mid-May. I don't really remember when it was that I put this aside. Um, it is knit in Cascade 220, color 296. Again, I'm sorry, I should have said at the beginning that all the information and links will be down below. But um, this is a beautiful color. Let me show it to you in the skein. You can see the heathering. It's like blue, green, some yellow in there as well a very tealy green color. It's definitely showing more blue on the screen. It's more, it's more of a green in real life for sure. Um, but I laid this aside for two reasons. One, it was getting to be warm out and it was springtime. So I was not feeling like working on a garment that I was clearly only going to wear in the cooler months of the year. So that was one reason I laid it aside. Um, however, when I put it aside. I literally had just probably five rounds of this cuff on this sleeve to do and then the other sleeve to do. So I think the bigger reason I put it down was because I was frustrated. So I loved knitting the body of this sweater. It is obviously an all, all over texture. It is a charted pattern. There might be written instructions. It's like a 17 or 18 page long pattern, but I like, I like to read charts. I find them easier to follow. Um, this is a little cabling type detail here. It's like, a, I think it's just like a one stitch detail uh, cable, but um, then you've got some ribbing, some moss stitch. So the body was no problem at all. There was, there was not any decreasing in it. However, the sleeve, 
you did do decreasing. And the thing that frustrated me about this was that the decreasing was not written into the chart. So I had to decrease every eighth round, but I had to just keep track of it on my own and adjust the pattern so that it would stay in pattern um, when I did my decrease rounds, which was not overly... Um, the part of my brain that wanted everything to stay uniform did not like that. So, and especially that happened here on this crisscross, like this diamond texture, because your diamonds, which are nice and uniform in shape on most of the port of the sleeve on the seam or at the beginning and the end of each round, you can see, see, they're not, they're not. This one's way bigger. These are smaller. And the reason for that is because of the decreases. And she says to decrease every eighth round and work in pattern. Um, but you can't, because it's, she doesn't have that written into the pattern. You have to just do it yourself and it doesn't, it just doesn't work out. As nicely in this section. Um, I was frustrated by that and I found it it made me a little bit annoyed to be completely honest because I, I mean I could do it and I figured it out but it is <laughs> when I pay for a pattern I want to have all that written in for me so that I don't have to figure it out. Um, so I think that was the biggest reason I set this aside even though the first sleeve was by far the hardest one because, you know, I was trying to figure all that stuff out. Um, and then I, for my second sleeve, I knew that I had already done it once, so it wasn't going to be as hard. And I already knew that I should not expect perfection and perfectly uh, symmetrical diamond shapes in that portion of the pattern. So, um, but when so when I picked this up last week, I finished, I just, I finished the cuff here and then I picked up this sleeve and I've been working on this sleeve. Now I've done all of this since Friday and I'm just now to where I'm going to start that diamond patterned section. And I think I have, I think I have two more decrease rounds to work into that. If I remember correctly, I wrote it down, but, um, so now I know don't get so caught up on, I mean, just realize that those diamonds are not going to be perfectly symmetrical in the seam size and shape, <laughs> but it, that really bothered me, uh, the first on the first leaf. Cause I was like, wasn't, couldn't there have been a better way to do this so that they were, I like, it just really bothered me, but I've already accepted it and I know that and I don't know that I will knit this pattern again. I like the body. I really liked knitting the body, but the sleeves, for some reason, I've just not enjoyed them as much. So that is what I have to say about this. It's going to be a lovely sweater and it's so hard to get an accurate like idea of what it's going to look like because all of the ribbing you know, it cinches it in. It's definitely one of those sweaters that's going to have to get a nice soaking and blocking session to make it shape, to get it into the shape that it's supposed to be. It's kind of got like this mock neck on it. Um, I think I said it's a super wash yarn. So when I try this on now, it's the length is not quite as long as I want it to be, but I know that once it's blocked, it's going to be the perfect length. And this is going to be like an oversized sweater for sure. It's going to be an oversized cozy sweater. Um, yeah, I think that's, I knit, I'm knitting the size small. If I didn't say that already, my measurements showed that I should knit the medium, but because it's super wash and because I knew I didn't want it sloppy oversized, I just decided to go with the small. And now that I know to measure up here and to base my garments off of this measurement, I, that, that right there, if I would have chosen the size based on these measurements, I probably would have chosen the small on that. But up until you guys informed me of that, I was always doing my full bust measurement, which is what I think patterns lead you to believe that you should do. It's just that this might give some people a better fit. 
Okay, I think that's all that I need to say. If you have any questions about that, just post them in the comments below. Okay, so let's talk about some future projects. Now, the first one is something I'm making for my daughter. It is a crochet pattern. I'm not going to talk an uh, incredible amount about this because I don't know how many of you are crocheters. But this I'm knitting to, um, not knitting, I'm crocheting. I'm probably going to do that a lot because I'm so used to saying the word knitting. <sighs> yeah, anyway, I am making this because I am making my daughter something that she has been looking for in the stores for a couple of months. She wanted a, a like a kind of oversized, but not sloppy, just a little bit bigger, drapey, crocheted shirt, top something like that to wear over dresses or um, over like a bodysuit with a pair of jeans. And she had found a couple because I feel like that is kind of trending right now, the crocheted tops. She found a couple, but none of them quite fit her the way that she had hoped. So she found, I think she must have found this picture on Pinterest. I'll go ahead and put a picture up here of it. And she asked me if I could make it well. Not only was it a, just a picture, it was actually a link to a pattern on Etsy. <laughs> And so I was like, yeah, yeah, I can make you this. This is called the Castaway Tunic. And I don't remember the designer's name, but that'll be down below. Um, so I bought this a couple of weeks ago. And when we were out last week at Joanne Fabrics, I found yarn for it. And so I bought three skeins. This is She just wanted it in like an off-white color so that she could it would be versatile and she could wear it with a lot of things. But I've never used this yarn before. I can't say I've even ever heard of this yarn before. It's KC, which I think is knit and crochet. Um, it's there. It's just a 100% cotton yarn, and the color is just called cream. It's. It doesn't say it's mercerized, but it seems like it's mercerized because it's she's got a sheen to it. Can you see that? I think you can see that in the camera. It's, this is a very beautiful off-white color. It's like a very neutral. I think it would look good with, I would say, most skin tones. Um, and it's a like a DK weight yarn, 180 yards per skein. I bought three of them. I According to the pattern, this should be enough. But if not, there is more at the store, which is always nice. I won't have to order more online and pay for shipping. So I'm going to start this um, this week. And this pattern... I, I will say I was a little nervous about knitting or crocheting a garment. It's been years since I crocheted a garment. And um, so I was slightly nervous about it, but I think everything will come back to me as I do it. Plus this pattern is actually crocheted in two panels that you then seam together to like along the neckline and then you do your sleeves last. So I think it's gonna be pretty easy to do. Um, so I'm not really worried about it, but, and I also, I love that this yarn, you know how sometimes you can just tell, tell by even when the yarn's in its skein, you can just tell it's going to be a nice drapey yarn. And I feel like this is going to definitely be drapey, which is what she wanted. She didn't want any, like, she didn't want a stiff top. She wanted something that was drapey. So I think this is going to be perfect. So I'm going to get this started because she's really excited about it. And I don't, you know, when as mothers who knit and crochet, when your child wants you to make them something, we jump on that, right? Um, and Lily loves when I make her things. In fact, the Ingrid sweater, she loved that. And I was going to give it to her, but I had her try it on last week and it is going to be way too big on her. She's very petite. Um, but if that would have fit her, I would have given her that sweater. Um, because she does really appreciate all of my family appreciates what I make for them, which is wonderful. Okay, so for this last section, I just want to talk about um, something that I would like to make for myself, and it is actually to fill a gap in my wardrobe. So, hold on one second. I'm going to grab something. Okay, so I, I want to knit a vest or a slipover. I own a slipover, but the one that I own and I, the one that I own, I bought at a store. I think it was TJ Maxx. Um, but it has like the fold over turtleneck collar. I want something that will go over uh, a couple of shirts that I own. 
and wear frequently. So, you know, this is just, I've had this chambray shirt for so long. My kids bought this for me for Christmas, maybe like, oh my gosh, nine years ago, but I wear it constantly. So I want a vest, a knit vest to wear over this. And then I also have this one, which is very similar, but I picked this one up at a thrift store, but it's like the button up collar. And then I also have this shirt that I don't wear very frequently because it's so sheer. This is more, okay, I wear this more frequently this time of year, but it's kind of even weird for that because it is a synthetic fabric. So it is, <laughs> it's not extremely comfortable for really hot days. Um, but then in the cooler days of the year, it's not warm enough. So I was thinking it would be nice to have a vest to wear over this because it's nice and flowy here. So we, you would have this flowing out from underneath the vest and then the, the sleeves are cooler. And so I just think this would look really nice with a vest over it. So, and then I have some other shirts that I think would look completely beautifully awesome under a knitted vest. And, um, like I said, I have the one, but it has the turtleneck and I wanted something with either a crew neck or a V neck. So I set out on Ravelry <laughs> last week to find some vests and I was actually going to do a whole podcast episode on vests. And then I thought, no, I'm just going to attach it to this episode because I don't think I need to do a whole episode on it. I'm just going to, in my typical fashion, when I do these kind of videos, I'm just going to slip pictures here and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the patterns and then you guys can give me any insight you have as I'm trying to figure out which one I want to make. Um, my plan is just to knit one at least for this season and then maybe in the future I will knit more. I don't know. I don't want to, I don't really see the need to have more than one vest, but you never know. You never know what I'll do. Okay. So for the first one, this is called the Shimmer Slipover and this is by Appella Knits. It is knit with a worsted weight yarn. It is a bottom up, which I am not crazy about. I, I don't really care for bottom up garment patterns, um, but I will do them if I really think that the end result is going to be worth it. The thing that I really like about this particular vest is I love that side seam and that how this split hem looks. Um, it just adds something special to it. And so that is what's really appealing to me for this from this pattern or with this pattern. Um, but yeah, so that's one of my options. The second option I'm looking at is by Maker Maker Shop and it is See My Vest and it is a free pattern and I have knit her, I knit what her tip top tank last year. It was too big. So I ended up wearing it as a vest, but really didn't get a lot of wear out of it. So I ripped it out and I used that yarn to make the summers, this anchor summer shirt. Um, but it is a bulky weight pattern. I would not use bulky weight yarn. I think it would be too hot for me. So I would want to go down to worsted. So I would need to adapt the pattern. But um, again, there is a formula that you can use that I've talked about in the past. And I will try to relink it down below if I can easily find it. That helps you calculate. You, you know, you do your gauge swatch and then using your numbers from that, you can plug in and figure out what size of the pattern you can knit to get the right gauge. Um, so this is top down and this is crew neck. So, and I'm, I'm still trying to decide if I want to do crew neck or V neck. I see benefits to both. So I am not completely sold on one or the other yet. My third option is vest number two by my favorite things knitwear. I've never knit any of her patterns, but I've heard a lot of, I mean, I've seen so many people who have, and so she's a very popular designer, although I've never personally knit anything of hers. It is DK weight, which would, I feel like would be a really nice weight for a vest since I am going to be layering. And since I don't want to be too overly warm, um, it's the V neck and it is top down. So that is, um, my first V neck option. Petite. Then we have another petite knit pattern, and this is the Sila Slipover. It is worsted weight. Now this is different than any of the previous patterns that I've shown because this one actually has texture to it, and I can't decide if I want that or not. Do I just want basic stockinette that's going to be more of a classic timeless piece, 
or do I want some texture? I like texture. I'm knitting the Ingrid sweater. You can see that was a very textured sweater. Um, so perhaps this might be one of those instances where I knit two vests, one, just a plain stockinette and another, a more textured one. But, um, I do like the look of this. And so I am considering this one as well. I should say that whatever vest I knit, I'm planning on knitting it in a off white color. I actually have this, this yarn here. This is um, Joseph and Annie yarn from Abundant Earth, Fi Abundant Earth Fiber. And this is the cinnamon color. There's some information there. This is, I believe, like a DK weight. Or maybe it's a sport. But I also have this Surrey that I could hold with it. And I have enough of both. I actually have enough of both to make like a full sweater, which is what I was planning on this. So I don't know that I want to use this for a vest. I may save this for a, a full sweater and just buy yarn for a vest. But I want to do like this kind of color for my vest because I want it to be able to go on. I want it to be versatile. Okay. I want it to be able to go with whatever color top I decide to wear that day. My last pattern that I was looking at is by Sari Nordland and it is the Rosa, the Rosalind top. So I don't know that this is actually classified as a vest, but it could be worn as a vest because I was looking through the project pictures and multiple people were wearing it over top of something else. It is a DK weight. Uh, it uses DK weight yarn. Now this is definitely the most complicated of all the patterns I would say because it uses cables, you're doing lace work. Oh, but it looks just so beautiful. And I particularly like, I'm going to post a picture here of that one of the Ravelry users um, posted of her version of it. And she knit this in Kelborn Woolen's Scout base. And I think she used two skeins and hers is very cropped. I would make mine a little bit longer, but when I saw her version, I was like, I want that. So I'm going to post that up there and put her Ravelry username so that I'm not just using her photos. <laughs> But I just was like, I love her version of this. And I can get Kelborn Woolen Scout yarn. I would buy three skeins. She used two. So I, I remember reading that she just knit until she had used up her two skeins because that's all she had. But I would, I would purchase three skeins of it and I would make it a little bit longer. But I love the hers because she's wearing it over a dress. So I feel like you could pull it off over a dress or you could pull it off wearing it over like a button down shirt. Um, so I don't know. What do you guys think? I have mo like the first three were very basic stockinette vests. And then the last two were definitely different. So maybe I just need to have a basic knit vest and then one with either the texture or the lace and cables. I don't know. I mean, I feel like a vest would be a pretty quick project because you're not having to knit arms. So maybe I will end up knitting two different ones this season. It's a possibility, you know? Okay. And that actually ends the podcast for today. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching and give me a thumbs up if you like and subscribe if you haven't already and you enjoy this content. I have provided all the links below so you can just click through to them if you want to find anything that I'm talking about. As always, if I forget to post something, just leave me a comment and let me know and I will do my best to rectify that. Um, my, all of my like social media accounts are linked below as well. And as always, thank you to my coffee supporters. Thank you so much for, um, you know, your financial support for this channel. I really appreciate that so much. And I am uh, so thankful for all of you. So have a ton of fun with whatever creating that you're doing right now. And I will talk to you next week. Bye.